to the malaika, to the angels in the sky, like we see the stars shining in the sky, in the heavens. So these majalis, these gatherings to the farishta, to the malaika, to the angels, are like stars. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the malaika, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the malaika, look at my servants. Hmm? Look at my servants that despite all the things that is surrounding them in their lives, they still remember me. They think of me. Yeah? The remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are very blessed in this majlis. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as I said, has chosen us to be in the house of Allah at this moment in time. Thousands of people outside, they are not given this opportunity. So first of all, we should be thankful and show our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this blessing and all the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن تَعُدُّ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوحَ Even one ni'am of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't say, وَإِن تَعُدُّ أَنْعُمَ اللَّهِ He said, وَإِن تَعُدُّ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ One ni'ma, one blessing is so great that we cannot see and we cannot understand, we cannot fathom uh, the importance and what is behind that ni'mah. We take the ni'mah of aql, for example. Okay. Mr. Malana Anwar Shah Kashmiri, Rahmatullah Alayhi's <coughs> son, Malana Anzar Shah Kashmiri, Rahmatullah Alayhi. He narrates a story with regards to his travel to the city of Bangalore in India. <coughs> And he says that once, oh, a number of times he had gone there, but once when he, gone there, when he went there, after his programs, okay, the people of Bangalore took him to a, a place where there were people who were insane, mentally ill people, okay, who had lost their intelligence and their intellect. They were all insane. So he's shown around, so he comes across a young lady okay, who is all the time singing some song and dancing. And then suddenly she tears her clothes and she gets into a rage. Okay, and she's doing this 24 seven, she's walking up and down. Okay, so he asks, what's the problem? He said, what's wrong with this woman? Why is she doing this? She said that she had lost somebody and in the remembrance and the trauma has caused her to lose her memory, to lose her intellect and intelligence, she's gone crazy. Then he's shown another person. He goes into the room of this person and this person, his room is very tidy. Everything is his place, the table, the bed, everything is so clean and tidy. He meets this person he greets him, he said, come in, Maulana. He talks to him nicely in a very good manner. Nobody would think that this person is mental. Nobody would think that this person is crazy. And then after a while, talking with <coughs> Maulana Anzal Shah Kashmir, this person, uh, he says, okay, I wish, wish to leave now. Maulana says, no, he said, no, sit some more. So he talks and stays with him for a little while longer. And after a while, he says, okay, now I have to go. So he says, no, sit a bit longer. So he sits again. Now he's insisting. And then when he says no, this person grows crazy. He starts breaking all the furniture, the table, the bed and everything. Okay? So again, my point is that aql, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ni'mah, is a great ni'mah. Okay? So one ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we cannot see okay, what is the, the so many benefits of it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this life for the ibadat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this life, okay, as we live our lives and the next generation that is growing in front of us, okay, they need to be passed on and the tarbiyah of this next generation is our responsibility. Every one of you is like a shepherd. And every one of you 
will be asked on the day of judgment, okay, what did you do with regards to your flock? Did you look after your flock? Did you give them the right training? Did you give them the right education? Did you guide them the right way? Or did you not? The ayah I recited at the beginning, Hazrat Mawlana Asad Madni Rahmatullah whenever he came to the UK, and he came many a times, this was the ayat, and this was the, the topic that he emphasized always. Ya ayyuhaladina amanuku anfusukum wa ahlikum nara. <clears throat> that who anfusakum wa ahlikum nara protect yourself and protect your family from the fire of Jahannam. So how do we protect ourselves and our families from the fire of Jahannam? By giving them the education, the tarbiyah that we need to instill in them. And this is so important that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'een for how long? This is the Nabi of uh, Sayyid al-Anbiya, Sayyid al-Rusul. And one nazar from him, one sight from him turned a person who was in the state of kufr into the best of mankind, into the Sahabi of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yet for 13 years, in the Meccan life before Hijrah, the Prophet ﷺ did the Hijrah, uh, did, uh, did the Tarbiyah of the Sahaba radiallahu to make their Iman solid and firm. The Ahkam came in the Madani life. Most of the Ahkam came in the Madani life and not in the Meccan life. And this shows us that how important it is to do the tarbiyah of our children, our awlad, our gener next generation. So, <clears throat> my brothers and elders, we have a duty to impart this knowledge and to bring the changes into our offspring, into our next generation, so that they become good Muslims, they become strong and firm in the Iman. The Iman is غير متزلزل. Is unshakable. Okay? No matter what happens, the Iman is strong and firm. Today we see in the world and all around us, we do not think about it, but there are many you will know who will question about Islam and Iman and Allah and the Prophet and the Ahkam. Okay? They will question about why do we have to do namaz, why do we have to follow the Prophet why, why, why? All sorts of questions will be made. Why they make these questions? Because they have not been given the tarbiyah that they should have received. And therefore, they question everything. Had they been given the right tarbiyah, there wouldn't be these questions. So, it is as I said, every parent, every one of us has the responsibility to give the tarbiyah that they deserve and that we on the day of judgment in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can then say that we passed on this deen to the next generation and protected okay, our next generation. The rate of apostasy that is going on at the moment, irtidad, turning away from Islam, leaving Islam, is so high at the moment and it's growing. Okay, the fitnas are all around us. So many fitnas that we cannot even imagine and count. And these fitness, these trials and tri uh, tribulations is drawing our youth, our children away from Islam and Iman. Shaitan and shaitani powers in the form of shayateen al-insi wal-jinn. Both the shayateen, okay, there's this shaitan and iblis that we cannot see from the jinn, but there are many from the ins. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, hmm? and that's why we seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ مَلِكِ النَّاسِ إِلَاهِ النَّاسِ مِنْ شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ الَّذِي يُوَسْوِسُ فِي صُدُورِ النَّاسِ مِنَ الْجِنَّةِ وَالنَّاسِ okay? So shayateen of both the unseen ones and the human ones are all against the, the powerful, uh, the powers 
are trying to draw our children, our youth away from deen with many different ways, many different uh, strategies that they make. And there's also one that is within us, our nafs. So all these powers are against us. So how can we protect our children? How can we protect our youth? And the madaris and the makatib, they are only one part of the jigsaw. It is every parent's duty first. And not that you leave your child to the maktab ustad or the apa or the ustani at the madrasa and say, okay, I'm going to send my son or my daughter to the maktab for an hour or two, uh, maybe a few times a week, and that's it, that will be protected. It is first and foremost the parent's duty. First and foremost, the parent's duty. That the child, before even that child goes to the maktab, to teach the, si the child the etiquettes of Islam, the deen of Islam, the iman, the dua, okay, from the beginning, if the child is given food, Bismillah rahman rahim taught, Okay, when the child is going to the toilet, when the child is going to the bathroom, when the child is going to sleep, all these things are the parent's duty, first and foremost. And that will only happen when the parent themselves are practicing it. No good you saying to your child, go and do namaz, go and do your prayers, when you yourself are not doing it. When the child grows up, what's he going to say? They might not say it at that time, because they are thinking, oh, I'm respecting my parents. I don't want to give them an answer back. Now, what will you think? Okay. The child will grow up not to do namaz and then will think, why should I do namaz? My parents telling me to do namaz. He, my father didn't do it. My mother didn't do it. Why should I do it? So the questions arise because the f parents didn't uh, fulfill their responsibility. So it is incumbent upon us that we take this issue seriously. Otherwise, okay, many of parents, we've seen and I've seen myself, parents are crying and then the tears are not useful. Even if they were tears of blood, they are useless. When the, they know that the son or the daughter has either gone away with a non-Muslim and turned against Islam or is abusing, okay, uh, the, the Islam and the Quran and the Prophet, okay, when they learn of this and they start shedding the tears, it's too late. So, my brothers and elders, and as I said, responsibility is everyone's, but the Asatiza of Makatib also have a role to play. As I said, the parents is the first, but the Asatiza of Makatib, okay, it is also their responsibility to impart this in a passionate and loving manner. Okay? It's no good saying uh, that you're going to be harsh with the child, with the person. Okay? Be gentle with them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, once upon a time, okay, a sahabi who was a Bedouin, who didn't have a lot of uh, etiquette, he came into the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's masjid and urinated. This is a man, okay, this is a person who has come and because amongst the, the, the Arabs, there was no such thing as uh, haya and sharam. There was no modesty. So he just urinated. The Sahaba felt very angry. They wanted to beat him. The Prophet said, no, let him finish. Even not even to stop him, let him finish what he's doing. And then he was called, the Prophet called him. Gently and lovingly, the Prophet said, this place is for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he sent somebody to clean up where he urinated. And the, the Sahabi says that I never saw anybody more gentler, more passionate, more loving than the Prophet Sallallahu What does that teach us? That when we teach our ch children, our youth, we are kind to them, we are gentle with them, we are loving to them. So there is a duty for each of us, whether we are, we are parents, whether we are teachers, okay, that the tarbiyah is very important and the tarbiyah has usul and principles. Those principles and usul, okay, we learn from the ulama. We learn and we get the guidance from the ulama. 
So it is also important for all of us to be connected with all of us. Okay? If you do not know, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الدِّكْرِينَ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ okay? If you do not know, then ask those who know. And the ulama know. So you should all take this a serious issue. If you want to save the iman of your <coughs> communities, of your families, of your next generation, and if you want to pass this to the next generation, it is absolutely uh, not necessary, it's, it's compulsory upon you to take the right steps in creating that environment where in that environment the youth can be brought to the masjid. There can be many different ways. <clears throat> A trend has now in the UK at least we have established and because I come from the UK that we have many of the masajid have started opening uh, youth centers adjacent to the masjid or part in the masjid, masajid itself where they would come for for example a game of billiards or they may do something like uh, uh, internal uh, football or whatever okay the youth are brought in and within that environment when it's time for salah, they will do the salah, they will do the halakas, they will do all this. So this is a means of drawing the youth and the, uh, the, the tarbiyah, okay? Because this will keep them in touch with the mahol, with the environment of the masjid. Instead of them roaming outside, okay, going to do different uh, illegal things or haram things, it protects them from that environment and brings them into the environment of the masjid. And then they are given talks, they are given... Uh, the, the ulama uh, are doing this as I say in many of the masajid so this is something that you can also think about by doing this inshallah you would be protecting many of people many of the youth and the children their iman okay? so I ask and urge everybody to think on this question very seriously okay? and to try to implement this and this can be this has to be a work between yourselves and the ulama as I said, for that you have to have the connection with the ulama. And the ulama will be the guide. They will do the guidance and everybody follows this. So inshallah, if you do this, then there is hope that inshallah the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be safe okay, in your uh, next generation. And hopefully that will go and pass on to the generation after that. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq to... Uh, Follow the, uh, the Sahaba radiallahu majma'een as they did okay, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi in turn. So sunnah is something that we should all implement in our life. In all walks of life, we should try to emulate the Prophet sallallahu alayhi And if we do that, our children, okay, in those households, for example, where the people and the parents are pious and they do namaz and they do dhikr and the tilawat and all the things, you will see the small children, even if they're not even two, they're not one, they will try to do the namaz. They will copy the parents. But where there is no one praying, nobody going to the masjid, okay? nobody has any connection with the masjid, then what do you expect? Are the children going to go to the masjid? No. That's a, an obvious and logical uh, result. So, as I said, if you keep connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you keep connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Okay. When you are eating, when you are drinking, okay, you do it according to the sunnah. Okay. When you are doing other chores, you think of how this should be done according to the sunnah. The child itself will grow into that practice without even you saying, and without even you asking and telling them to do it. Okay. They will ask you a question, what is this dad, what is, why is this mom? Okay. You tell them this is the sunnah of the Prophet This is how we do it. Okay. The child will learn and will learn to practice and see this. Uh, the result will be that you will see okay, uh, a big improvement in your child and in your youth okay, lifestyle. <clears throat> Not boasting, but Alhamdulillah, I can say from my, first, uh, my uh, family's experience and those of the people I know, if the person is, for example, doing the tilawat and dhikr in the house. Okay? There are families that I know whose children are born and when they start speaking at nine months or ten months, 
They are hafiz and hafiz of one juice, two juice, five juice of Quran. Because the mother, she recited the Quran whilst the baby was in the, in the womb. Okay. So this tarbiyah doesn't start okay, when the child goes to the madrasa or the maktab. The, the tarbiyah starts even before the child is born. So my brothers, I hope this message that you take it to your families and to your uh, spouses and to your sisters and mothers, okay, that this is what we need to focus on. Otherwise, the generation that's coming, or the generation next generation, will, will be lost. And it is being lost already. And to stop that, this is how, what we, uh, how and what we should be doing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to do the amal on whatever has been said and whatever has been heard. وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله